Hey, today's tutorial, let's do this hat together. This is called the five star beanie and this is featuring the star cluster stitch that you see right in the body of the hat. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as TheRInspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we're going to be working on this five star beanie together. We're going to be covering how to do the brim and then how to do the body of this. This is a lot more uh, simpler than I expected. Um, the pattern really intimidated me but this is one of those patterns that is a gem in the box. Really amazing. If you love the star stitch this is exactly what you see. It's called star clusters and so there's a star cluster row and then a single crochet, a star cluster and a single crochet and we always do when it comes to the decreasing near the top. It's in the uh, single crochet round. So therefore the stars always line up perfectly together and it's really quite amazing. So I know what people are gonna think about this brim here and it's slip stitching to create it and a lot of people get really frustrated with that particular stitch but it looks like it's knitting. Now if this is struggling for you with the Karen Simply Soft what I decided to do today is use Bernat Super Value. The yarn holds itself together a lot more easier and the plies don't separate as easily as they do with the super soft and the reason why they separate is that the super soft is a premium acrylic where the super value is a value acrylic and so the value tends to stick together a lot more uh, better because it is a value. So the higher the premium of acrylic the more the plies separate but it's a higher value of yarn and it has a lot more color shades and available. So whatever you decide to use whether it's the Karen Simply Soft or the Bernat Super Value you cannot go wrong with this pattern. So without further ado let's uh, talk about the brim and get you started on that and then we'll go through the body of this in today's tutorial. Let's start off with the ribbing and the ribbing is actually not hard to do. It just takes a little bit of time. This is done with slip stitching in every row and because of that it makes it nice and dense. It makes it thick as well so it goes right over the ears of the person wearing it. So it's a really kind of an easy concept in order to follow. So let's uh, review how to do this first and then we'll get you to do that and then we'll move back up and then we'll start doing the star stitch uh, area of the hat. So I'm going to leave an extra long string and I'm going to start and to do this we need the smaller size hook a size H a 5 millimeter and we need to chain 13 to start with. So let's do that. So we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 and 13. So I got 13 on here. See how long that is? That is the, the ribbing. It's not gonna stay that long though. The way that we're about to do this it's gonna cause it to shrink and I'll show you how to do this right after this. So the first thing we need to do is we need to go second chain from the hook. So we go one and two, turn it over and get the back loop only and insert in, yarn over and pull through and through. We're gonna slip stitch our way all across the back uh, loop of the chain. And you wanna make sure when you slip stitch that you're not too tense so don't be fighting with anybody and uh, you just wanna glide your hook in and pull the yarn through without any tension coming from that ball. The, the more tension you put and the tighter that you make this the harder it is as you go out through it, this, uh, this ribbing effect. And you're going to notice that that long string that I just started with is going to get a lot smaller because the slip stitching will compact everything into position. So you're gonna go all the way to the end of your first chain. The biggest thing that I notice with these brims you gotta make sure you're watching your stitch count. So if you ever miss a stitch somewhere it's gonna be noticeable because <laughs> by the time you get your 18 inches done for the, the ribbing you might actually have a, a large triangle. So you come all the way to the end and you should turn your work. So I'm going to show you how to turn the work so it's easier so that you can start the next part. Whenever you start another row don't ever turn your work like this so that this string comes and, and sees it from the front because it'll be virtually impossible to do the next part. So whenever you turn your work just rotate it so that it's just coming out and sweeping out in front of you and just chain one first and starting in this very first stitch okay it's the back loop only. So just going in. So if you're new to crochet there's a stitch is always made up of two strings. Together they make a stitch. The front string when it's facing you is considered the front loop and the one on the far side is the back loop. So we're gonna come into the back loop only and we're going to slip stitch ourselves, and we're going to slip stitch in the back loops all the way down the row. So this is all you need to do for the brim. So the biggest key f element here is to make sure you get the right string. I'm going to show you a little something right now. 
I'm not perfect and I, I'll be the first one to tell you that. So what's gonna happen here is a brim that I did and I screwed up. Do you see where I screwed up? So sometimes maybe I was watching TV or something I missed one of the strings or I grabbed an extra string and you can literally see that in your project when something's not quite right. So you wanna make sure that when you're doing this, oh there's, that's probably the same one but oh there's another one right there. So you wanna be, be careful with this is that you're grabbing the right strings. The, the effect is really quite uh, stunning. Um, it's well worth the time. It's going to take you a while to do the entire 18 inches but it's worth it and uh, don't deny yourself the pleasure of this because it's gonna be doubling up the thickness. You're gonna have the beautiful elasticity elasticity of the, the ribbing that you want and it's there's no denying about it. It's gonna be fabulous. So what I want you to do is uh, make your ribbing uh, this 18 inches long and then when we come back I'll have that done. So I'm gonna put on a pot, pot of uh, tea and I'm gonna relax and make sure you get right to the end and then once you're to the end chain one first and then go see how I just dived right into the next one and I just turned it. Okay. So uh, just take your time and when I come back I will have the 18 inches done and then I will show you what to do and we'll begin the, the hat process for making the stars and I think you'll really love it. So uh, I'll meet you after this and I'll see you in just a little bit. Okay so I'm back and I did my 18 inches. It took me about an hour and a half to do this. Now do you notice I don't have it stretched. I laid it down on the tape measure without stretching it because it has quite a bit of stretch but unstretched it's 18 inches as prescribed. So what we want to do is that we want to join the, the uh, end to each other. So we don't fasten off. We don't use any sewing needles at this point and all we're just gonna do is just fold it over and we're going to slip stitch into the foundation chain that we had started with. Now remember that there is 12 stitches so just I give those a quick count as you go across just inserting into the back loop on the first one and then you're going into the foundation stitch of the next one across and you're just slip stitching and this will keep it looking in balance as you go. So this is how you'll do that part. So just continue to do that and then I'll see you back and we're gonna start doing the star clusters next. So I've now just done my slip stitching. I now have my, my brim just like so. So it's really quite neat and I am done with the five millimeter size H crochet hook. Now it's time to move up. So I'm just gonna pull this out and insert a larger hook in. And the larger hook was a size I a five and a half millimeter hook. So we have a nice tight tension here and now we're gonna loosen it off a little bit with using a bigger size hook. So what we need to do for the very first round is that we need to chain one and we need to equally space 71 single crochets around the top of this brim. 71 is critical. Okay, so do not get any other number but keep it to 71. So, you so now we have to just chain one and what I would recommend, don't grab just one strand that's on the top. Go for two. So just when you insert your hook just make sure there's at least two strands to count as a stitch and you have to get a total of 71 of these stitches all the way around. Now you might not have enough of these um, these ribbing to create 71 so you might need to be creative and just put in a few extra here and there uh, just equally all the way around so that you get your 71. So when you go to pull it apart make sure there's at least two strands on the top of the hook and therefore it, when it goes to be worn that you don't have these ghastly holes in your project that you can actually see because you haven't gone into enough strands. So just uh, continue to do that and get your 71 in there all the way around and when we come back then we'll begin to do the clusters based on this. So 71 is your magic number and let's begin to do that right after this. So I'm coming up all the way around and some of these have two single crochets in top and some of them are just singles. So I actually I did it on my very first try to be quite honest with you and I got myself close to the start so I'm just gonna join with the slip stitch and so this is what it kinda looks like at this point. So this is all gonna balance off um, all the extra stitches that you had to put in if you didn't have enough space and uh, you don't need to worry about it at that point. Let's move along to the next row. We're gonna start our first round of the cluster and here we go. We're gonna start by chaining three. So one, two and three. So the way to do the cluster is is that we have to play with this chain. We have to play with where we slip stitched the starting and then we have to advance two more. So here's how we're gonna do it. So we're gonna go second chain from the hook. Okay, go into the back loop only just go in. Yarn over pull through. You're gonna come into the next chain 
So going right in, yarn over, pull through. You now have three loops. You're looking for a total of six. You're gonna come into where you did the slip stitch, yarn over, pull through, there's your four and now you're going to advance two more single crochets. So yarn over, pull through and yarn over, pull through. You now have your six and I'm going to show this again so don't worry about it if you're not catching on. So yarn over, pull through all six and then yarn over and lock it in with a, with a chain. So let's begin your next one. So in the next one we don't have the chains to worry about but we have these, this side of the clusters to work on. So we're gonna play right directly in the center first. So go right into the center, yarn over, pull through. Now you can see that there's like spokes on the star. Okay, we're gonna come in between the first and the last one just right directly through the, the work, yarn over, pull through. You're going to come into the next stitch that is a, that is already occupied by the last star. So yarn over, pull through and now you're going to advance two more empty stitches. So yarn over, pull through and yarn over, pull through. And now you have your six again. So yarn over, pull through all six, chain to lock. Let me show that again. So the next one is right into the center of the star, yarn over, pull through. The next one is right in between the first and the second yarn over pull through. The next one is in where the last star is already sitting in and now we advance two more empty uh, single crochets. Okay, so yarn over pull through all six, yarn over and lock. I'll show it again. So into the center, into the first, in between the first and the second spoke into the next one that's already occupied by the last star and now we advance two more empty single crochets. Yarn over, pull through all six and then yarn over to lock. And I want you to continue to do that all the way around. So I'm coming up all the way back around and I'm just finishing off the last one. So just coming into the last. Actually I thought this was gonna take longer to go around than I did and I'm really quite happy that it's not. So coming up all the way around and finishing the last star, I got a chain one first and then I just joined to the top of, sorry, the second stitch or the second uh, chain and that concludes that round just like so. So what I want to do then is that I want to start up with the next row. Now if you notice in the pattern all the star clusters do not sit directly over top of each other. So the center point of this one is never gonna line up with the center point of the next one. It's gonna be offset. So when we go to start these next rows, oh, the next one is just single crochet and single crochet appears every other row. So we just chain one first and we come into the very first one that's leaning over and we single crochet and then the next one is at the middle of the star. Just like this. Okay, so the next one is just lying on top and then the next one is the middle. Okay, the next one is just lying on top and the next one is the middle. So please continue to do that all the way around for this uh, round and then I'll show you how to get started on the star uh, cluster again and then we will let you go and to, to finish off this section and then we're gonna start the decreasing then after that. Okay, so single crochet around. Okay, coming up all the way back around and the last stitch was gonna be the center of this cluster. Okay, so just don't go any further because then you'll end up going too far. And then what I need you to do is slip stitch to the beginning single crochet. So we're going to start up then the next row and this is what it looks like so far and we're gonna start up the next row. It's just identical to what you've already done. So let's begin to do that next. To start the next row, remember it's chaining a three. So one, two, three to get started and then you are just gonna go to the second chain and go into the back uh, loop only of the second chain. You know getting started is always the hardest part of anything and then we go to the next chain, we go to the slip stitching and then we advance two more to get your six. Okay there's your six and then pull through all six, yarn over to lock it with the chain and then start the next one. So go right into the center, go between the first and the second post there, we go into the where the last one is occupied and then we advance two more empty single crochets. Yarn over, lock. Okay, so I've already shown you how to do that before. So what I need you to do is that we need to go to do this continuous uh, section right now until we get to a certain height. And let me discuss that in just a moment. 
So now it's time to get their measurements that we need. So right now we have done the star cluster and then a single crochet and then we're gonna continue to do a star cluster, single crochet and we keep doing those two rows until you get to six and a half inches. So just looking at where I am right now. So I'm going to have to do, it appears three more inches at this time and then we're gonna start doing the decrease then to uh, bring this back in balance and then it will get a lot quicker. So what I want you to do is continue the last two rows uh, over and over and over until you get to your six and a half inches that you can see from the start of the brim and then we're gonna start the doing the decreasing from that point. So here I am and I've got my six and a half inches from the bottom of the brim to where I am right now. Now before you continue to the next part of this tutorial you need to make sure that you finish off with doing the star cluster as your last round before continuing. Now I did look ahead in this pattern and as I was thinking about how am I gonna decrease such a pattern like this and the decrease always happens in the single crochet revolutions. So every time we do the star stitching just like so there's no decreasing at all so there's really no brain power that you gotta have to waste. <laughs> for me you know that's a miracle in itself but all the decreasing is actually in the single crochet rounds and because of that we're gonna be able to work really quickly on this and let's uh, begin to do that. So make sure that you do finish off with the star cluster round first before car carrying on and we're going to start now doing the, the crown area and we're gonna do the decrease and we're just gonna go step by step for all 10 rounds. Okay let's do round number one of decreasing for the crown. So round number one we're going to do a chain one. So let's do that and it says single crochet into the first single crochet which I've just done and now it says single crochet two together. So the next two are going to be together which will be inside the center of a cluster. That one so just wrap and pull through and hold and then go into the next one wrap and pull through and hold and you have three loops on your hook. Wrap and pull through all three and that's a single together two. Uh, single together two uh, together or single crochet two together. <laughs> okay so now it says one single crochet in each of the five and then repeat from the asterisk. So in this round there's five single crochets in a row so let's do this. So one, two, three, four and five. Okay and now the next one is going to be single crochet two together. So the next one going in pulling and hold going into the next one pulling in and hold and yarn over and wrap and pull through all three. So let's begin to do another again. So one, two, three, four, five. Okay and then we're going to do two together again. So into the next one and into the next one and then two together. So uh, please do that same uh, rhythm all the way around. So uh, five in a row and then two together, five in a row, two together and I'll meet you at the end of this round number one for decreasing for the crown. When you get all the way around just slip stitch to the top of the beginning single crochet. So now you can kind of see that it's kind of just starting to kind of pull in a little bit. So let's move on to round number two. So for the next rounds number two, four, six and eight do not include ten are all the same. And so all the difference is, is that we have reduced the number of stitches so therefore there's going to be less star cluster. So it's gonna get faster and faster for you. So we're gonna start the star cluster the same way. We're going to chain three. Okay so we chain three and then coming into the second one, the next one, the slip stitch, Okay and so the next two that are empty and you do the star as normal and then pull through. Okay so you can continue to do that. So the only difference is, is that there will be less stitches and this will pull in a little bit tighter. So this is round number two and I'll meet you at the end of this and move you up to round number three. So I'm finishing up round number two of decreasing of the crown and I end up back to where I should. I have the right stitch counts because I don't have any more stitches to play with. I just wanna lock it and then just seal it to the top and then let's move up to round number three. So round three we're going to do a decrease once again. So round number three we're going to start off with chaining one and then we single crochet into the first one. So the next one will be single crochet two together and then for this entire round which I don't need to film too long but it's just going to be four in a row this time instead of five. So one, two, three and four and then the next two are together. Okay so the, again one, two, three and four and the next two are together. 
Okay, that's how you have to do this one. This is a round number three. So I've now just come all the way back around. I want to slip stitch to the top of the beginning single crochet. Let's move up to round number four. Round four is exactly what we've already done uh, in round number two because it is a, a an even number. So two, four, six, and eight are all the same. So we chain up three and we begin to star cluster again all the way around. The only difference this time there's even less stitches because we've decreased in round number three. So round four please do your double your uh, star clusters once again and go all the way around in the same fashion and I'll meet you at the end of this rotation. Just finishing up round number four of decreasing the crown and I'm getting that last star cluster done and then just slip stitch it to the top of the beginning or sorry the second uh, one in. Okay so let's go on we are going to uh, round number five. This is what it looks like at this point. Let me just pull it out. Let's flatten it. You can really kind of see that the top is now coming out just like this. So let's uh, begin and we're going to move up to round number five. So round number five we're going to do a decrease once again. So let's just chain up one single crochet into the first one. And this time we are going to do single crochet two together for the next one. And there is going to be three stitches. So the next three are by themselves. So one, two, and three. And then the next two are together. Okay, so it's this time it's three. So one, two, and three. And then the next two are together. Please do that all the way around. This is round number five. So I'm coming up all the way around already pretty quick. Quick and quick. And let's just slip stitch to the top of the first single crochet and that was round number five. Let's move up to round number six next. Six is identical to the star to what we already know. So we're chaining up three and begin your star clusters once again all the way around for round number six. I'll meet you at the end of this round and we'll move up to round number seven together. I'm coming all the way back around. This is round number six and we're going to move up to round number seven next. And let's just slip stitch and begin round number seven. So there's hardly anything left as far as the opening. It's almost done. So round number seven is very simple. Uh, chain one, single crochet into the first one. So this time around it's going to be two single crochets in a row. So one and two and then the next two are together. Like so and then one and two and the next two are together. That's round number seven and please do that all the way around. Okay, I'm finishing up round number seven. That was really quick. Slip stitch to the top of the beginning single crochet. Number eight is the star stitch once again. So please do that. So just chain up your three and begin your star clusters and cluster all yourself all the way around. And I'll meet you at the end of this uh, revolution and then we'll move up to round number nine together. So I'm coming up all the way back around and I'm just going to slip stitch to the top of the beginning and that was a cluster round. So now we have only two more rounds to go. This is round number nine. Nine is very very easy. We're just going to um, chain one, single crochet into the first one and then uh, what it says is two together is in the next and then a repeat around. So everything in this one is two together. So there's no spaces. We're really kind of giving conclusion for this. So just two together all the way around for round number nine. Okay, I'm coming all the way back around. Just slip stitch to the top of the beginning and now let's do the final round and you could just have a little hole now and we are going to chain one and we're going to single crochet ourselves into um, a th single crochet three together. So we're just gonna come in and we're gonna do three in a row. So we'll just keep going and going and keep gathering and now you'll have four stitch or four loops on your hook just yarn over and pull through all three and you continue to do that. So the next three are going to be together all the way around. And what we're going to do once we get all the way back which is only just a few seconds from now um, we're just going to use the a long string that is still left on your on your hook and what we're going to do is that we're just going to use that string to pull everything nice and tight together on the top. So just go all the way around three together. Okay so I'm all the way back around. I've got just a tiny little hole. Just leave an extra long string on this and what we're going to do is that we're just gonna put this 
this in a darning needle. So just yarn or yarn over and pull through. And there's just a small little hole. Okay, it's just very tiny. Okay, and we're going to put a darning needle through onto this uh, project. Okay, my darning needle is now on. So all I want to do is it just go into the stitches right on the top and just go right across the where the hole is and just bring it to a conclusion. So just go in a few times in different directions just to bring that hole nice and tight and closed. Now we are going to install a pom pom onto this which will take two seconds and uh, we just want to have a nice uh, finished off top piece like this. So what I'm gonna just do is tie a quick knot on here. The pom pom is gonna sit over top of it anyway. And what I want to do is that I want to make sure the straggler or the loose end is gonna go on the inside of the hat. So just feed it ins inside the hat. Just don't poke yourself. Just open it up and just push it into the middle. Okay. And what I have here is that it's coming in in here and I just want to be able to uh, trim it off. So actually you know what I'm gonna do? I'm going to secure this in the inside as well. So I'm just going to just make sure that it doesn't ever pop out. So I just wanna go in behind some stitches. If you go in three directions at one time um, it will never fall out on you. So one, so they're just go into different fibers and then this will never fall out. Nothing's worse than having a tail fall out, especially on your head. Okay, so let's uh, secure the pom pom next. Yeah. So here's what the hat looks like without any pom pom on it. It almost kind of reminds me of a beehive in, in many ways. Um, it has very elastic um, brim on it and it looks amazing actually. In the way that they had us do the decrease, it looks absolutely perfect. Now the stitch, the seam line there, Okay, I'm a trained professional, but um, it is a little bit obvious that it's there, but it's not screaming at you. Nothing's worse than wearing a hat and having a seam line scream. So that's pretty good. So let's uh, begin to get your pom pom. So these are by uh, Bernat, and these are, look at the size of this. Yes, and it's nice and fuzzy. It's a, it's a secure base. It's like filled with something. And what we want to do is that we want to use these strings that are on the pom pom. Okay, there's two of them. So what I want to do is that I want to use my crochet hook. I'm going to use the smaller one of the two and I'm going to feed that in. So I'm just gonna put the hook on the inside and I just want to come out near the top. Not right into the top piece but just into some fibers. Okay. And I want to get as close as I can to the center it's almost hard to tell which one is the center. There it is right there. Okay, and I'm just gonna grab only one strand of the two. And I wanna pull that through. Okay, there's one. Okay, I'm just using my hand at this point. And now I'm just gonna leave that and just, and just rotate the hat and just go in again on the other side of the center. Just gotta be very careful here. The angle in which I'm working is not really fun for me at this moment, but I'm gonna pull that through. So both of those strands should be through the center if I'm really careful about it. Let me just take a quick look. Yeah, there they are. Okay, so I got both of the strands in the middle and I'm just gonna pull this like this. Okay, so what I wanna do is that on the inside of the hat, I wanna tie this strand into a knot. Just like that. And I'm just gonna do a couple extra knots just to, nothing's worse than your bomb bomb falling off. Okay, so now that it's tied, I'm happy with that. I can just trim that. And now I have a hat with the pom pom on the top, just like this. So this is how you would do um, this hat. This is called the five star beanie. A really kind of a fun pattern. Um, it was really neat and now you have a great hat to wear for the winter. Till next time I'm Mikey on behalf of Yarn Inspirations as well as the crochetcrowd.com. Thanks so much for joining me today and we'll see you next time for more free patterns and ideas. Bye bye. <music>